people experienced when I first began. One of them, how many people are students? You raise your hands. That's awesome. I think that's amazing that you guys came. Thank you for coming. Well, chiropractic care was so important to me when I went to chiropractic school. I was so into it and I valued it and I got how incredibly precious it was that I never wanted to adjust somebody when I first started. Because, I mean, I meant me. <laughs> I know me. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing this. Other people <laughs> should be doing this. <laughs> so, I get into practice. This is, this is not a great headspace to have when you first start in practice, but I love people, so I do it anyway. And I open my doors, and this gentleman comes in as a new person, and he has cerebral palsy. He has two strapped-on canes, and he's, you know, really trying hard to, like, get into the office. And he sits down, and he starts telling me all the different things that are going on with him. And I am a lover. I love people. I fall in love with people in that first visit. I just want to help them so much. You know, so I'm listening to him. I'm like, oh, my God, that's amazing. We have got to find you a chiropractor. That's what I'm thinking in my head. <laughs> and I'm just listening, like, oh, this would be great. And then I was like, oh, no, I am the chiropractor. <laughs> so I start trying to talk him into going to see other people, right? <laughs> That's the best strategy for him and me. <laughs> and so he's like, no, no, I want you. I'm staying. I don't care. He took three buses to come see me. It was horrifying for me, the whole experience. I was just like, oh, this is so awful. Well, what I want you to know as students, in case you ever struggle with this, is that this man was my greatest gift because he gave me the understanding that the body is, it can heal. It has nothing to do with me, although it did because I worked so hard to become good at adjusting. That part I knew I wanted to be good. I wanted to be so good that I, knew I was never good enough. Until someday I just realized, you know what, I am enough for this person who's in front of me or they wouldn't be here. And so I started adjusting him and within six months, he was able to walk with just a regular snazzy cane that he bought. And he was so excited about his dressy cane that he didn't have a strap on canes. At 48 years old, he shook someone's hand for the first time in his life. He had never been able to do that. And so, yeah, I know, right? For him, for us. Now, I say that, and what I also want to say is that from the stage, I often hear us talk about the miracle cases. And so in case you're in your office going, oh, that's not really happening for me, what they are getting is what they're not getting. Most of the people in our office, say an amen if you understand what I'm talking about. What they're getting is what they're not getting. The people who are regularly coming to your offices, they're not getting colds. They're not getting visits to the emergency room. They're not getting divorced. They're not getting mental breakdowns. So much of what we're seeing is what we're not seeing. And we need to remember that. It's the intangible. Thank you. Thank you. So this woman comes into my office.